So we do have a guest employer with us today. I'm gonna to let her introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Precop and I'm a professional recruiter with Brooksource. Uh, we're a local IT consulting firm. Um, so with Brooksource, uh, I help direct our associate level consulting program. So I exclusively work with upcoming recent graduates um, as they're looking for full-time positions within information technology upon graduation. So in my role, I'm looking at resumes um, all day, every day. Um, attending career fairs, I'll be um, at the fair next Wednesday. So feel free to uh, stop by the virtual booth. Um, so really excited to just share some of uh, my knowledge with you all as you get ready for the fair. Great, thank you. And my name is Chrissy Francis. I use she, her pronouns, and I work as a career counselor in the College of Science and Engineering. So today, Nicole and I are gonna be tag teaming this presentation. And I think it's really great that you get to hear the employer perspective. And then I can provide more content about the actual career fair platform and what we hear and advice from a majority of the employers that we work with. All right, so let's get into just talking about the career fairs. So I realize many of you have probably attended the career fair in the past. Um, it definitely is going to be looking a little bit different this fall. But for those of you that this is brand new, each year we do host two large scale career fairs just for CSE students. So we offer one in the fall and that's typically a two day career fair and then another one in the spring. So something to keep in mind is the recruiting cycle in CSE. Um, we do have a lot of companies that are hoping to recruit interns and full-time candidates for positions starting this summer or after May, after graduation. Um, that's why we have a two-day career fair in the fall because we have so many employers that are interested in getting candidates lined up ahead of time. We still offer the fair in the spring because there are still plenty of employers that hire throughout the year. But just so you know that our recruiting cycle is quite early. So now is the time to be looking for those opportunities that will be for next summer already. Um, so this year we have 164 employers registered for our career fair next week. Uh, we are going virtual. Uh, we are going to be using the platform called Career Fair Plus. And our fair, just to be very clear, is taking place next week on Tuesday and Wednesday, the 29th and the 30th. It's going to be from 11 to 5 p.m. Central Time both days. Um, so you're welcome to go to whichever day seems like the best fit for you or whichever time of each day it works in your schedule. I want you to check out the CSE Career Fair website. Uh, this website has a lot of good details about how to prepare for the fair, additional workshops that we're hosting this week, FAQs, more details about the fair. And I believe our moderators are sharing some links with you in the chat, um, directing you to the Career Fair webpage and also to the Career Fair Preparation Guide. This is a PDF guide that has a lot of really detailed information on logistics for the virtual career fair. So make sure to read through that if you're looking for more information. So the career fair is a great way to start building your network. Um, I know networking can be a little bit intimidating and a little, feel a little bit scary, but I think it's really important to remember that everyone's been in those shoes and everyone's felt that way before, um, myself included. So it's really important just to be yourself and really focus on making a, a positive first impression. Um, networking uh, is a really great way to just practice your professional skills, um, get a chance to connect with employers and more informally learn about their company, um, what kind of is happening from an industry trend standpoint, informally learn about different positions that you may be interested in, whether that's through an internship or full-time um, employment, and really just gives you an opportunity to start building positive relationships with different employers, um, which truly can give you a competitive advantage um, during a formal application process. So um, moving on, one thing that I think is really important to note is that a career fair is not in a specific job interview. So when you're at the fair, it's really focusing on making that first impression um, and really kind of showing your best self. So again, giving you an opportunity to explore different companies, positions, and areas within the field. And so there's kind of two main avenues that you may find yourself um, attending the fair. The first is maybe you're not actively seeking an internship or um, a job upon graduation. So the career fair can really act as a solid vehicle for learning more about a company. Um, you can figure out what that specific employer looks for in an applicant or in an application. And uh, again, from a networking 
is likely a really great opportunity to use specific contacts that you may want to revisit later in, in your search. The second avenue is if you're actively seeking internships or uh, positions after graduation, you can learn about specific opportunities. Um, every employer is a little bit different um, in terms of how they uh, kind of work through the fair. A lot of times um, employers will let you start kind of the initial application process where you can get flagged as a, um, a positive candidate. Others may give you more specific information on um, and redirect you to their website or their um, applicant talent management system or their formal portal. So this is a really great way again for employers to not only meet um, students that are actively searching but a really great way for you all as students to put your name or get yourself out there um, in front of those employers that are actively hiring. So now we'll kind of transition into more of the logistics and how to prepare for the fair. All right, so I'm assuming many of you have already downloaded the app, but if you have not done that yet, make sure that you download the Career Fair Plus app. This is where you get all of the good information about the employers that are attending the fair and also how you sign up for meetings. So one thing to keep in mind is that we have two different um, events basically. So we have day one and day two of the fair because they are two different days and different employers are signing up for different days. So once you download the app, if you haven't yet done it, just search Minnesota in the search bar and you'll be able to find the CSC virtual crew for day one and day two. Um, then we want you to create a profile. Um, this can be done through the app. You wanna edit things maybe like uploading a profile picture, adding in your phone number, email, whatever else it's prompting you to fill in, make sure that you fill out your profile as completely as possible. Your phone number will be used the day of the fair if the employer has any trouble connecting with you right through the Career Fair Plus platform. Um, so just keep that in mind that there will be kind of a backup plan on how to connect with you if the technology is all of a sudden not working. Um, your profile will be seen by employers, so just keep that in mind. Um, they will not be able to filter you out based on anything you have in your profile, but they'll just be able to see that information about you. Within the app, there are also some links to additional kind of prep information and also some support rooms for during the fair. We're gonna be having a CSE Career Center room. This is a Zoom link that you can join if you have questions about the fair, um, if you wanna practice your elevator pitch or just kind of need some encouragement, you can join us in that room and we'll chat with you there. There's also a CSE Co-op Program room and then a room for international student support as well. So if you have any questions that pertain to those rooms, we encourage you to join those during the day of the fair. And again, you can find those links in the more section of the app. So this is um, kind of a screenshot of what I was mentioning about the two different days of the fair. So we wanna make sure that you really do switch between those two different events, day one and day two. You can see on the bottom of the screen, there's a little button on the app that says change events. And then that's where you can go in and um, toggle between the two. It's a little confusing if you haven't done it yet, but just make sure that you're aware that you need to look at both days. All right, and then as you are researching employers within the app, um, you can make notes right within the app. You can also favorite companies. Uh, this is also where we would recommend that you start researching positions or things that the employers, roles that the employers are hiring for. Um, there is a filters button and there's a few different features within that features within the filters button. So you can narrow down by major. Um, you can also look at the position type that you're seeking. So maybe you're only looking for internships. You can select that right within the filter. Your year in school and then work authorization is another filter. So if you are an international student, you need work authorization to work in off campus internships and after graduation. Um, this is true for both paid and unpaid work experiences. Um, so I have flagged a couple of the filters that you might want to use as an international student. There are others that will show up in the app. Just don't pay attention to those ones. They are confusing and they're not really working as we were hoping they would work. So you can filter down by CPT and OPT. And this is what most of you are going to be using if you are a current student. CPT is the work authorization you need if you are seeking an internship and then OPT for full-time work after graduation. Um, if you're an alum or if you've already been working for a little while, you can look at the sponsor filter. Um, 
you're not going to get a ton of results. I think sometimes employers are a little unsure of how to use these filters as well. So feel free to meet with a career counselor and we can talk about other resources that you can use on how to find employers that would be a good fit for you. And remember, visit ISSS if you have any additional questions on work authorization. All right, so as you are researching employers by using those filters, you might come up with a list of employers that you're interested in speaking with. Start doing some research, look at what the company does, maybe their mission statement, values, positions they're hiring for, um, products they make, new developments. That way you're gonna be fairly informed when it's time to meet with that employer. Make notes right in the app. Um, it will be on your screen when it's time to speak with them. That way you're gonna feel really prepared. And then as you're doing your research, you'll also wanna ask questions. So come up with questions for the employer. What are you curious about? What do you wanna know? Um, that will allow you to have better conversations with those employers. And I know a lot of our students really focus on those big name employers, but I wanna encourage all of you to look at other companies that maybe you haven't heard of before or you're not as familiar with. Sometimes those smaller companies are actually a better fit for a lot of our students. So keep an open mind as you're exploring. You can also use Gold Pass Powered by Handshake to research some of the companies as well as their own company websites. Many of those are linked right in the app. And then you can also look for position descriptions on Gold Pass or the company website. Not all of them are gonna be posted. Um, you might run into a couple of employers in the app that don't even say what positions they're posting for or hiring for it. That can happen too, so just be aware. And I believe you also received another link in the chat um, related to our researching employers and in industries guide that will give you much more detailed information on what to look for as you're researching employers. All right, so I mentioned Gold Pass Power by Handshake. Again, if you're not familiar with this, this is our job and internship database for U of M students. It's kind of like Monster or Indeed, but tailored for you. So anytime we have employers saying we really want to hire your students, we direct them to post all of their positions in this platform. So you can use Gold Pass to apply and search for those jobs, internships, and co-ops. You can also find and register for related career events within that system, researching those companies and positions. And then you can also upload your resume into the system. And if this is the first time you're doing it, you will get a resume review. Um, you might get an automated message at this point because we get very busy around the career fair time. So we don't wanna prohibit anyone from having the resume posted. Uh, but we do encourage you to create an account right away if you haven't done that, um, just because we have many employers directing students to apply for their positions within Gold Pass. So check that out if you haven't yet. All right, so getting on to scheduling meetings. Um, this is new and different for our virtual format, but I think it will work very well for students and employers actually. So the meeting sign up open this morning. Um, so you should be able to get into the app right now, click on the employer that you're interested in meeting with, and then you'll be able to view their schedule. Most employers are most likely scheduling five to 10 minute appointments to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. Um, knowing some of you probably figured this out, but you're not gonna be able to schedule appointments back to back. You're gonna have a few minutes in between Use this time to take notes on your conversation with your previous employer and also prepare for your next meeting. Um, these meetings are scheduled on a first come first serve basis. So if you are ready to sign up for meetings today, go ahead and do that. Um, just don't wait, especially for your preferred employers. We are expecting that some of those times will fill up. We checked the time slots as of 10.30 this morning, and for day one, 36% of the spots are already filled. Um, there are still close to about 5,000 open spots, so this is still good. And then day two, it's about 34% as well, so very similar. Um, yeah, so just don't wait. And then if there is an employer that you weren't able to meet with or to sign up ahead of time, or you find out the day of the fair that there's somebody else you wanna speak with, you can schedule appointments if they're still open through four o'clock each day of the fair. So that's an option. Um, there are also some drop-in rooms available. So about 25 employers have signed up to do a drop-in room. So not as many as those that are scheduling meetings, but this is an opportunity for you to join a room. It's not a one-on-one -on -one meeting to talk about a specific position, but it's more about getting information about the company, talking with the employer, learning what they want. So it's kind of a, a group room that you can join. 
All right, we're going to go to quick video. Hey everyone, this is Chris from Career Fair Plus, here to show you how you can host a virtual fair in the Career Fair Plus app. As you can see here, I've set up a demo virtual fair. From here, I can jump in and look at employer details, just like in an in-person fair. If I decide I want to talk to an employer, I just tap the virtual appointments button to view their schedule. As you can see, employers can have multiple schedules. I'll select the schedule I want, and I can see the details about the schedule, including prerequisites and information about who I'll be talking to. I can also see what times are available to speak with this employer. I just select a time that works best for me, tap yes, and my appointment has been booked. If this is the first time I'm booking an appointment, I may be prompted to log in or to create an account where I can add information about my major, GPA, and upload a resume. After I book my appointment, I see some additional instructions appear. This lets me know how I will get in touch with the recruiter during my scheduled time. As you can see here, it's telling me to join the Career Fair Plus video chat by tapping the link. At the time of my appointment, I just tap the link and I'll be brought to the video chat. I first need to select that I want to use video, and then I'll be given the chance to preview what I look like before knocking to request to be admitted to the meeting room. When the recruiter receives a knock request, they can see a preview of my camera and decide either to let me in or respond by putting me on hold, which lets me know they'll get to me shortly. If the recruiter accepts my knock, I'll be led into the meeting room for my appointment. After we're done talking, all I need to do is tap the leave button and I'm done. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or would like to schedule a time to talk, please visit our website at careerfairplus.com. All right, so hopefully that answered some of your questions of what it might actually look like. Um, there are some employers that have yet to sign up for their spots. We are working really hard to get connected with those employers so that they can put their schedules out there. So check back. Um, not everyone is ready to go today, but hopefully shortly they will be. And then if you're running into employers whose time slots are filled, we will also be reaching out to them to see if they have capacity to add any more time slots. So check back in the next couple of days to see if there's any more availability for those um, employers to speak with that you might be interested in. So moving on to your resume, um, so everyone will have one resume um, submitted in their profile that all employers and companies will be able to view. Um, one thing to keep in, uh, keep in mind is that you want to make sure that your resume is easy to read, um, formatting is simple, um, and knowing that there will only be one version. You want to keep it uh, general to all companies as opposed to tailored to one specific organization. Um, definitely would recommend that if you haven't already, take a peek at the guide um, linked in the presentation, um, as well as attend. Um, I know Career Services is opening a lot of drop-in events, as well as the upcoming um, resume marathon. So a great way to get a few extra sets of eyes on your resume before the fair. So one other thing to prepare for the career fair is um, your elevator pitch. And this is a really important piece to have practiced before you walk into whether it's the um, drop-in kind of group session or your individual one-on-one -on -one appointment. And with an elevator pitch, there's two main components. So you'll see on the left, you want to make sure that you're giving an overview of yourself, um, your name, your year in school, your major, um, and generally what you're looking for. Now, if you're not specifically in the conversation to discuss an internship or specific job opening, you'll want to have a specific question prepared about the organization or what they look for in an applicant. Um, wanting to make sure this is a great way to use that research that you've done ahead of time to help the conversation flow. Now, if you find yourself actively searching for an internship or a specific job after graduation, this is a great way to more so showcase your skills and how it may apply directly to a specific opening or a role um, that the company is actively hiring for. So definitely, again, a great opportunity for you to have a discussion 
um, and not necessarily just a robotic um, kind of putting out there with your script, but making sure that you have specific questions prepared so that you can engage with that employer and recruiter in a back and forth conversation. So clothing and attire. So um, wearing appropriate attire can really increase your confidence and just overall capture the attention of the recruiter or employer that you're speaking with. First impressions absolutely do matter. Um, I'm a big believer in uh, dress to impress and look good, feel good. So wanting to make sure that you feel confident and you feel comfortable in the conversation. Um, also knowing that the fair this year is switching to a virtual format. I absolutely recommend dressing from the toes up. You never know if you may need to, you know, get out of frame to plug in your laptop before, you know, to charge it or um, adjust the lighting behind you. So wanting to make sure that you're fully um, dressed and that you feel confident. Um, it's also really important to dress in a way that's authentic to how you like to be viewed in the workplace so that you feel, again, most comfortable and confident as you're in those conversations. All right, so we do know that professional attire can be quite expensive at times. So CSC has partnered with an organization called Ready for Success to provide professional clothing at no cost to you. So if this is something that you need assistance with, um, we encourage you to sign up on our website. Appointments are limited um, and you may not be able to get in before the career fair next week, but you may be able to have an appointment for future interviews, and getting professional attire that way. Um, so if you're approved for an, a clothing appointment, we'll provide you with instructions on next steps and how to get connected. But generally, you'd receive at least one suit, either brand new or gently used, as well as some accessories, really just pending availability. So keep this in mind if you need some help with professional attire. So on the actual day of the fair, um, a few tips and tricks to make sure that you're presenting your best self. Um, first and foremost, we absolutely recommend logging in a few minutes early to your scheduled time slot. Um, it's important to note that the employer that you're scheduled to connect with may be in another conversation, so you may be put on hold or um, kind of left in that virtual waiting room. Um, but if you're having technical issues, um, again, the recruiter employer will have your phone numbers, so they'll be able to directly call you should there be any issues. Um, another important thing to note in terms of browsers for the best connection is definitely using Chrome or Firefox. Um, secondly, you will get your schedule ahead of time. Um, so making sure that you have that appointment schedule pulled up so you know when, when you need to be in that virtual room um, and so that you're on time for all of those interactions. Um, you can absolutely look at other companies or go into some of those group drop-in rooms as well in between appointments to maximize your time and, and uh, what you're investing during the day at the fair. And um, wanting to make sure too that you're maintaining professionalism in all of your interactions. So one thing to keep in note is making sure that you know, you're uh, mindful of what's in the background of your video, um, making sure that you're in a quiet space, you have good internet connection, um, if you're able to directly connect um, to like a wired internet connection, that's preferred. Um, but just making sure that you're able to give your undivided attention for the entire duration of that, um, of that interaction. Can I just add in another nice thing about a virtual platform is you can have your notes right in front of you. The employer won't know and it's probably expected. Um, so all of your research can be right there and you can use that in your conversations as well. And when you're interacting with an employer, um, remember that these recruiters and individuals are human too. So view it as a conversation. So when you enter the virtual room, smile, um, keep yourself open and uh, really know that there, everyone there is there to get to know you and more about your background not necessarily just memorize what your resume says on paper. So make eye contact, try to be as comfortable and confident as possible. Again, this networking can feel a little bit awkward and it might not be everyone's first nature, but just remember everyone is human too. Um, so just making sure that you're being honest, you're being polite um, and also considerate of the time. So a lot of times the conversation can get really good and get really into specific um, components 
of your background or what you're looking for, but just being mindful of the time slot that you have um, as while well you're being engaged, but yet being considerate of the time. And then important things in terms of follow-up. So the fair after you're done with your time slot or your scheduled appointment, it doesn't, the work doesn't end there. So important things, um, you always wanna make sure that you're sending a thank you um, within 48 hours, we recommend. Um, this can be um, an email uh, based off of the contact information that you've gathered or what's um, listed in the app. Um, and then also taking those follow-up action items um, from the conversation. So sometimes that may be specific applications through their website. They may direct you to another specific individual, um, but actually starting that application process in a timely manner. Um, another really great thing to do, um, regardless if you're attending the fair for a specific internship or job opportunity or just for networking, always highly recommend that you connect with that recruiter or individual on LinkedIn. So not only connecting with um, the individual, but you can also follow the organization. So you can see updates or new positions that are posted. And it also gives you another way to interact and network with that um, company throughout your application process or for future processes. Wanting to make sure that you um, understand how to stay in contact with employers. Again, LinkedIn is a great way to do it. Um, in that conversation, hopefully you're gaining a better idea of what that specific application process may look like as well. So you can have an understanding of what that cadence for communication may look like or when to follow up or when to expect to hear back and uh, start that actual interview process. The last thing to note is that a lot of organizations hold comp uh, company information sessions, which provides another great way for you to gain experience and um, exposure to the company's missions, uh, goals, values, specific positions that they're hiring for, what they look for in applicants. So that's definitely something to have on your radar. Um, and I believe um, Gold Pass, how powered by Handshake, um, has those specific events listed that you can register and attend. Mm -hmm. And this fall, we actually have had the highest number of information sessions posted. I think employers are taking advantage of our virtual format, but that's really good news for you. You should have a lot of opportunities to connect with employers in that type of environment. Many are happening before the fair as well, so you can take a look at it now, but then many more will happen after the fair too. And then some other upcoming events. Um, we do have extended drop-in hours. So drop-in career counseling is basically a chance to talk with a career counselor or a peer assistant for a quick question. Usually these are about five to 10 minute interactions. You don't need an appointment for this. You just access um, our drop-in room through a link on our Career Center homepage. Um, so we are extending our hours. Typically they're two to four, Monday through Friday throughout the school year. But leading up to the career fair, we are making them a little bit longer so you have more access. So it is starting today at one o'clock, going to four o'clock, and that will be the case um, this whole week. And then next Monday as well, one to four. So you can just pop into that room if you want to talk with somebody quickly. It's a good spot to get a resume review, talk about the career fair, any last minute questions you might have as well. We also have a virtual resume marathon happening on Friday, September 25th. Um, these are going to be 15 minute appointments where you get to meet with an employer and they give you feedback. Um, so you're going to sign up for that within Gold Pass as well. And then the virtual practice interview days. This is an opportunity for you to do a mock interview with an employer. Those happen after the fair. So October 1st and 2nd from 9 to 4. So there's some instructions on the screen there of how you can go into Handshake and find the sign up spots. Um, sign up as early as possible. These spots are limited as well. Um, we will match you with an employer so you can get that feedback directly from them, but it's another really great way to network too. So if you just want to practice talking with an employer in a very structured way, um, it can be really helpful. And then we are at the beginning of our workshops this week to help you get prepared, but tomorrow we have a resume writing workshop. Wednesday, job and internship search strategies, and then Thursday, interviewing. And all of those sessions will be recorded and posted on our YouTube channel. So if you can't attend it during the time of, but you would still like the information, that's okay. Just check out our YouTube channel after. Um, and then just pay attention in Gold Pass. Make sure you know what's happening in there. 
um, look for those employer events and info sessions. And then if you're finding any positions that look interesting to you, feel free to go ahead and apply for them now. You don't have to wait until the fair has come and gone to apply. Um, especially if you're really excited about it, a lot of our employers will kind of take down their postings or close their posting window um, maybe the night after the fair because they're going to make their decisions pretty quickly. Not everybody, um, but sometimes that can happen. So you don't have to wait to apply. So pay attention to those upcoming workshops and events. And we do have some time. So I think we'll check in with our moderators to see if there were any questions that came through the chat during our session that we can help answer out loud now. So Catherine and Shelby, were there, was there anything that came through? So there was just one question in the Q&A just a second ago that was, should we apply to positions before or after the career fair? Both. <laughs> yeah, you can do either one. Um, kind of like I just mentioned, it depends on the closing window. So definitely pay attention to the, the guidelines on the job posting position. Um, if you're a little unclear about things and you would like to have the opportunity to talk with the employer before you apply, I think that can be a reason to wait to apply after the fair. Um, but if you apply beforehand, you might be thinking, why would I go to the fair? <laughs> Oftentimes you can speak with the employer and say, I'm super excited about this position. I already applied. Can we talk a little bit more about it? And then you're going to have some really good information from that conversation in an upcoming interview that you could use. So I think it is still very beneficial. All right, and keep on adding in those questions in the Q&A. If, if you're still wondering about something, feel free to add them in. All right, I see another question. It says, is there a max number of employers that you would recommend meeting with one-on-one? -on -one? I want to maximize my opportunities, but I don't want to get burnt out. Um, I can share my thoughts, and Nicole, if you have any ideas too, feel free to jump in. I would really look at how much time you have during the day and give yourself some time to process in between. So if you're planning on being at the fair all day long, you're gonna have more capacity to talk with more employers. If this is your very first fair and you're not really sure what to do, give yourself a little bit more leeway. You don't need to have a back-to-back -back book schedule. That might be a little draining. And I would also suggest prioritizing your list. So who are your top employers you for sure wanna meet with if they have some open times and then whose drop-in rooms might you want to visit if you still have some capacity to do a little bit more. Yeah. Nicole, do you have any ideas with that one? Yeah, I'd add on to that in terms of quality interactions. Um, as we kind of walk through, a, we want to make sure that you're preparing for each conversation. Um, so, so that will take more time as well as the follow through. So for me, I would prioritize the companies that you're hoping to speak with and ensure that you're investing the amount of time that you have um, from a wanted or quality standpoint as opposed to quality or quantity. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. All right. Another question. I'm a first year grad student and I'm wondering how I can set up my career fair and handshake account. Um, is there a tutorial somewhere? And then how do I register for info sessions? So good questions. Um, I'll try to go through all parts of those. So setting up your Career Fair Plus profile in the virtual Career Fair Prep Guide, it's a PDF guide that was sent in the chat. There is a link for the Career Fair Plus checklist. It goes through more detailed information on how to set up your profile. But there's a button right in the app where if you, I think it's under your account or some language that sounds like that, um, you should be able to set up your profile right within the app. So make sure you've downloaded the app and then you can plug in your information for your profile. For Handshake, the URL is goldpass.umn.edu. Sometimes it's a little confusing because it's Gold Pass powered by Handshake, so we use the language interchangeably. Um, again, it'll kind of guide you through how to set up your account. Um, on our CSE webpage, we do have a button on the home screen that says Guides, and under there we do have a guide that says, um, I think it's Getting Started on Gold Pass. So you might be able to look at that as well. And then the info sessions that we mentioned, those you can access within Gold Pass. And they're really easy to find. You just search under the events and then you can find all the info sessions. And there's usually just a little button that says register. And that will give you all the information you need on how to join, um, such as a Zoom link, date and time. You'll get a confirmation email. 
Um, and those things are not events that you need to pay for. So it's just kind of signing up to attend and then you'll get the information. So good questions. Thank you for asking. All right. Um, let's see what was um, a question in the chat about whether um, when you go to the drop in hours, whether you should bring your resume or email it to the counselor. Um, if you uh, want to answer that one. Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, so we're meeting in Zoom. So you can either screen share with us in the drop in hours or you can use the chat window to send a link to your Google Doc or there's also an option to upload a file in the chat window. So you get to pick. All right, I see another question. It says some companies have several job postings where the job titles read either the same or very similar. Are those meant to be separated job openings or the same? Um, Nicole, do you have any thoughts on that one? Yeah, I think it's it's kind of tricky because it depends on each employer. I think that's a really great question or notes to have prepared in those one on one conversations um, that in those scheduled appointments of being able to reference to specific postings and um, having questions around what what differentiates um, between them. Um, and then from there, you can more um, like have more information as you go through the application process. So I, I can't speak for all employers, um, but that to me is a great opportunity to ask questions specific to those postings. Thank you. Um, another question, if there are multiple interviewers for a company that I would like to talk to, is it okay to schedule time with both of them? I would suggest signing up for the time slots that make the most sense based on how the employer is promoting it. So some employers are promoting a time spot to speak about a specific role. Make sure you sign up for the correct spot. So if you're looking for an internship, make sure you're only speaking with a recruiter for the internship. Um, if there is a more specific instance, feel free to add on more to your question. Um, I'm not sure if I fully answered it, but that would be my recommendation to start. Um, we also have a question in the um, chat about whether if an employer does not list the CPT sponsorship, if um, they can talk to them as an international student. Yeah, yep. International students can talk to whoever they would like. There are no filters to prevent you from signing up with an employer. Um, so yeah, feel free to talk with them. In general, as international students, we do not recommend that you lead in with the conversation, I'm an international student, do you hire me? That's not really what employers wanna to talk to you about. They really wanna know who you are as a candidate. Um, and I think doing some of your research ahead of time to figure out if that employer has typically been friendly to international candidates or not. And by friendly, I mean, have they been open to working with them in the past? Um, so if you, maybe want to stop by drop-in hours, we can assist you more with finding out some resources where you can research employers to figure out if they've, you know, recruited or hired international candidates in the past. Um, but you can certainly talk with people that do not have that filter listed. I have a feeling there are many employers that will be at the career fair that may be open to it and just did not include that on their filters when they signed up. Thank you for that question. Are there any other questions? You all have been asking really good questions. I'm glad you're participating. Were there any other questions that came up during the presentation in the chat? There weren't any questions that we did um, talk about already that I didn't see. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, if there are no additional questions right now, thank you all for coming today. Um, I hope you learned something helpful. And if anything else pops up, feel free to use our drop in hours in the Career Center. Um, come to some of the prep sessions later on in the week, too. And then again, we will be posting this recording on the CSC YouTube channel. So check back there in maybe a day or two and it should be posted. All right, and thank you, Nicole, for providing all of your helpful insight and advice.
And feel free to go talk with Nicole at the career fair as well, right? Yes, please. There's also one more thing in the chat. Um, some One of the attendees missed the start of the meeting and was wondering if they can access the slides. They'll be in the recording, yep. All right, well, thank you everybody. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.